Hi, this is Michael Altos. We're continuing our discussion of opioids and context-sensitive halftime. This is recording part two. The next opioid we'll discuss is meperidine, also called Demerol. Instant interestingly, this is the only opioid with some local anesthetic properties. Meperidine can decrease contractility at high doses as a result of this. In general, meperidine has similar effects to morphine, sedation, meiosis, euphoria especially, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and histamine release. The euphoria is what makes it a popular drug amongst drug-seeking patients. Meperidine has an active metabol metabolite called normeperidine, which is excreted in the urine. Meperidine and especially normeperidine can cause CNS excitation, including tremors, myoclonus, and especially seizures. And for this reason, we really limit the maximum dose of meperidine to 600 to 1,000 milligrams a day. Obviously, in renal patients, because of the urinary excretion, we should be more careful with this drug and use lower doses. Now, this isn't a big issue anymore because we don't really use meperidine for analgesia routinely because of the euphoria, the renal clearance, and the toxic metabolites. Again, I want to emphasize that this is a drug where high doses can really be dangerous in patients with renal disease. The place that you'll see meperidine being used most commonly is in the PACU, but not for pain, but for shivering. And meperidine is really very effective in reducing shivering from a number of different causes. And this is probably mediated by the kappa opioid receptor. And for this dose, which is much smaller than the, than the analgesic dose, meperidine is probably safe to use even in renal patients. The drug is redistributed in about 4 to 16 minutes, and its elimination is 3 to 5 hours. The dose of meperidine for analgesia is 0.1 to 1 milligrams per kilogram. So if you think about that, we're looking at 10 to 100 milligrams as a typical dose. That's 10 times the dose of morphine. But again, we're really using it more for shivering. And in that uh, dosing range, we're looking at between 12 and a half to 50 milligrams IV for, in adults for shivering. Fentanyl is a synthetic mu receptor agonist, which is 100 times more potent than morphine. Together with inhalational anesthetics, it can reduce MAC by 50 to 70 percent. Fentanyl is much more lipid soluble than morphine, and it rapidly crosses membranes. Therefore, it has a very rapid onset and rapid redistribution to inactive sites. The drug is highly protein bound, and this is a pH dependent process, so that if patients have acidosis, it leads to unbinding of the drug from protein, which leads to more free drug. It is rapidly metabolized in the liver with a high extraction ratio. High dose fentanyl, and we're talking about like 100 micrograms per kilogram, very high dose fentanyl, has, uh, was in the, in older days was used as a cardiac anesthetic approach because patients remained very hemodynamically stable but it was associated with slow emergence from anesthesia and some reports of awareness. Also, we spoke before about muscle rigidity, and we really saw this a lot with high-dose fentanyl, where muscle rigidity um, would occur when you gave a bolus of fentanyl. Then, because of the rigidity, they would give more muscle relaxant, and this led to more awareness. Again, high-dose fentanyl was used in cardiac anesthesia. They called it stress-free anesthesia, but it doesn't really prevent the inflammatory response the same way that morphine does. As we said, fentanyl is very effective as a short-acting single bolus uh, opioid with an onset when given IV of as little as 10 seconds and recovery starting within 5 minutes and complete within 60 minutes. But when large doses or multiple doses or infusions are used, then we start to see that saturation effect where it starts to build up in other tissues and we can have prolonged respiratory depression and slower recovery. The clinical duration of fentanyl normally is limited by its redistribution. Let's talk about dosing. As a pre-medication, usually we're giving 25 to 50 micrograms IV. As an adjunct to an induction, anywhere between 1 to 5 micrograms per kilogram IV. As an intraoperative opioid, usually 0.5 to 2.5 micrograms per kilogram IV. 
up to a total of about 3 to 5 micrograms per kilogram per hour. And a fentanyl infusion can be run, usually in the range of 0.5 to 2 micrograms per kilogram per hour, although some have reported going up to 10 micrograms per kilogram per hour. Again, with risk of prolonged recovery of this lipid-soluble infusion. Side effects of fentanyl, as we said, chest wall rigidity, making it difficult to ventilate patients. Myoclonus and seizure-like activity have been observed. Pruritus and nausea and vomiting, common with any opioid. And of course, respiratory depression, and especially when fentanyl and midazolam are given together. So we should be careful about this synergistic effect. A few related drugs, first sufentanil, which is a synthetic opioid that's a thousand times more potent than morphine, making it about ten times more potent than fentanyl. And in many ways it's similar to fentanyl, with really just a shorter redistribution half-life of about 30 minutes. Alfentanil has a potency somewhere between morphine and fentanyl, but a much faster elimination half-life. And this probably has to do with its lower pKa, which means it's mostly non-ionized, so it can very quickly travel across, across membranes for rapid onset and redistribution. It has a very short duration, even in very large doses, and for that reason it's commonly used as an infusion. And they say that alfentanil can reduce the MAC of volatile agents by up to 70%. Remifentanil, which goes by the brand name Altiva, is an ultra-short-acting opioid. The reason it's ultra-short-acting ultra short is because it isn't metabolized in the liver, but rather it undergoes ester hydrolysis by blood and tissue esterases, not pseudocolonesterase, but other esterases. So its metabolism is actually faster than its redistribution. So the primary mechanism that remifentanil stops working is actually by metabolism. It's almost always given by infusion or a slow bolus because rigidity can definitely be seen with a rapid bolus. And remifentanil at high doses can decrease MAC by up to 90%. The dose of remifentanil is usually 0.5 to 1 microgram per kilogram as an induction dose. And this is usually given over 30 seconds. It can be used as an infusion at a rate of 0.1 mics per kilogram per minute. And this would be a target serum level of 5 to 7 nanograms per milliliter. And this is often done along with a low-dose propofol infusion. Remifentanil can also be used for MAC anesthesia at a lower dose of, let's say, 0.05 to 0.25 mics per kilogram per minute. Although, if I use this drug together with midazolam or propofol, I will use much lower doses, even as low as 0.005 mics per kilogram per minute. And you want to be very vigilant for uh, respiratory depression and respiratory arrest when remifentanil is used together with other drugs. One concern with remifentanil is post-operative hyperalgesia. That is, when the opioid is stopped, patients may actually have more pain than they would have had if no opioids had been used during the case at all. This may be some form of acute opioid tolerance there also has been some nausea reported with remifentanil. And finally, it is an expensive drug. That's it for this section. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll continue with the next recording.